Hey everybody, Christopher Rod here, and this is a game called Prey. This is made by Arcane, the guys who did Dishonored 2. And initial reviews are actually very, very strong. Uh, there was a lot of community kind of worry about what this was going to be like, but people seem to be really reacting positively to it. I played the uh, first hour demo not too long ago, and I really got this sense that we were in this kind of Bioshock-esque world, but like in space. And um, as an immersive sim, I think this is going to be really interesting. Like, we're going to be able to go our own path, we're going to be able to choose what type of uh, quests we handle at our own pace. And the first hour gave me this real sense that this story is going to be quite engaging. There were some pretty heavy bombs in the first hour that were shocking to me. And I'm interested to go into this and see have they changed that first hour? I don't know. But beyond that, like, are we going to get answers to a lot of the questions that we had after that demo? So, uh, I will be going through any of the documents or emails and things like that that we can find to really flush out that backstory. And, uh, if you watch the demo, don't worry, I'm not going to miss the shotgun, okay? And if you haven't seen the demo, then it doesn't matter. We'll, we'll get all the weapons, hopefully. <laughs> uh, here we go, guys. We're going to start a new game. And we're on the PC this time. The demo is only on the PS4 and the Xbox One. Um, I think we're gonna go. We're gonna go on hard. So basically, the difference here is that we're gonna do slightly less damage to enemies. They'll do more to us. Just like ups the tension a little bit. I will suggest that right before we get going here, that we set the vibe. And if you don't know what that means, basically turn off your lights, put on your headphones, turn up the volume, and then just get into it. Let yourself immerse into this world. And, uh, let's have some fun with Prey. Here we go. Now, in the demo we did, uh, we chose the female Morgan. I'm gonna try the, the male one, see if there's any differences. Um, I- although I doubt that there will be, if any, it will be minor, but let's- let's go with the male version this time. Good morning, Morgan. Today is Monday, March 15th, 2032. Not that far into the future. From today. This is such an amazing apartment. Hey, Morgan. Wake up. You're burning daylight. Set the helicopter to pick you up. It's just a few tests. Don't forget to wear your suit. See you soon. Oh, listen, I, uh, really great you decided to come on board. We're gonna shake things up, Morgan. Like old times. So, from the demo, we know that that is, in fact, our brother. Um, so we've got this objective on our transcribe here. Let's check this out. Alex convinced me I'm going to join him aboard the Talos One space station. The work we're doing up there is too good to pass up. Plus, he says he's got a surprise. I have to jump through some hoops at the training center before I board the shuttle. You got it. Um, now, the one thing that throws me is his his age. Like, he looks significantly older than we do. Um, I don't know if that gets answered or if it's just he's just a much older brother. It's completely possible. Um, now, this section, there are a few books and things like that in this apartment that we're going to check out before we leave. If you want to skip this, that's fine. Um, I'll put a little annotation so that you can jump ahead. But um, I think the books, from the demo at least in this section, were really interesting. So I don't remember seeing a closet here last time. But I probably just didn't check it. So we've got plastic tubing, frayed wire in the nightstand, Neuromod application instructions. Okay. So, warning, Neuromod should only be administered by certified Transtar technicians under controlled conditions. Subject may experience slight discomfort, swelling, or redness of the eye shortly afterwards. So, step one, we remove the Neuromod from the vacuum-sealed container. Step two, we press the rubberized eye cup firmly against the bony orbit of the eye socket. Step three is to keep the eye open. Step four, to press orange release trigger and continue to hold the Neuromod against the eye for five minutes. And step five, dispose of used Neuromod in provided biohazard bag. Yeah, so basically it's this thing that you stick on your eye with a long needle that goes into your eye to apply these Neuromods, which can 
kind of like the Bioshock uh, plasmids. They will alter your abilities. Um, but as we'll find out a bit later, um, these can be removed and kind of reset your memory in a way. But I think we'll find some stuff that will explain that. Um, so let's grab whatever we can here. Burnt circuit boards look like a bit of a, a workstation here. Hold F. Okay, we can pick up certain things. Speech synthesis and natural language generation. This is from Chapter 3 of Speech Synthesis and Natural Language Generation by Sebastian Smythe. Voice conversion technology enables synthesis systems to generate speech patterns based on their source or entirely new voices without the need for exhaustive recordings and pre-processing. The quality of the resulting voice depends on the training data as well as the precision of the conversion function and limitations in processing power. So these things could, in fact, mimic any voice. Um, depending on how how much processing power they have. And you might not even need to have like a full recording um, to like to analyze, which is pretty powerful. We're in the future, man. We are officially in the future. Hands on electronics. Um, now this is by Antoinette Sokol, which is a bit of a throwback to Dishonored with Anton Sokolov. It's pretty cool. Uh, by working through a series of practical experiments, this humble manual will introduce you to the fundamentals of modern analog and digital electronics. By the end, you'll be able to construct any simple circuit. As Thomas Edison once said, to invent, you need a good imagination and a pile of junk. So we're a bit of a tinkerer, it seems, just based on our apartment alone. Um, perhaps part of the reason why we're on board with this crew, but we'll see. This is our... <laughs> this is our password. It's F paradox question mark. Let's check out our computer. Transtar employee workstations often contain useful information, files, and utilities. Many Transtar employees have private workstations. Locked stations require a password. Search the environment for clues or use a special hacking ability to bypass the login. Workstations may contain email, files to download, or special utilities. Now, I'm just noticing this here, but in the bottom right of, um, of Alex's computer here, our brother, uh, we notice that he's got a, a four as some type of, I'm guessing like a hacking strength uh, requirement. When we went to our computer, I saw a one. So that's probably all that that is, is maybe a level that we need to hack it. Okay, so this is from Thomas Tucker to Morgan copying our brother Alex. Hello Morgan, Morgan. so glad to hear you'll be coming aboard. Your first official work day is Monday, March 15th. We first, but first, we have a series of training exercises we run with all new employees. Just some stuff to clear you for life in orbit. Exciting times ahead. Have a good flight, and I will see you soon. Thomas Tucker, Human Resources, Talos One Research Facility. Okay, we have a delivery. Hey, I sent a package with everything you'll need for your first day. Uniform, transcribe, and neuromod. Install the neuromod right away, as we'll be running some tests first thing in the morning. Just follow the instructions. I'll be in touch. So, I think we've already installed the neuromod. Um, and this says we're running tests first thing in the morning, which means this is an older email. So I think we probably installed it last night. Ready? Hey, I just got off the phone with mom and dad. They won't be there when the shuttle departs. They're in New York. Company stuff. But they send their best. I think mom's a little disturbed that both her children are going to be outside her gravitational pull at the same time. She said you'd better behave and do everything your big brother says. Okay, actually she said the opposite. I'm supposed to behave and do what you tell me to do. So there you go. That's mom. Anyway, everyone's excited about your ideas up here up there, so get ready. I'll probably call you in the morning to make sure you're up. See you very, very soon, Alex. Cool. I really like the interface of these computers where it doesn't like suck us into another another clunky kind of email interface. It's just we're just standing here naturally looking at them. I think that's really well done. Very cool. What a... Oh, this place is so nice. The door is locked unfortunately. King, Kings and Way Sparkling Wine. Why not? A little note. Congrats, Morgan, from Alex. Thank you. Appreciate that. The Method Psi. Excerpt from Architects of the Neurological Revolution. What if I told you I could turn you into a mathematician on the level of Einstein in under 10 minutes? I'd say you're full of it. That's the first thought that crosses my mind, but it withers in the face of Alex Yu's conviction. Despite myself, I'm riveted. He's not bullshitting me. Himself, maybe, but me, no. Alex leans back in his chair. 
Welcome to the age of the Nero mod. Just shows a little bit of the power of these Nero mods and how strong that they can actually be. Sun dried tomato jerky, we'll take that. Encyclopedia of Food, Science, and Cooking. Uh, transglutaminase, a naturally occurring enzyme found in plants, animals, and bacteria. TG is often used to bond protein containing foods together, and the production of foods such as imitation crab meat and fish balls, known colloquially by chefs as meat glue. Chef Saw's Chef Shaw's tip. Gluing chicken skin to salmon will actually protect the outside of the salmon from overcooking. Today I learned. It's a rice cooker of sorts, or a food dehydrator, perhaps. Gluke assist. Pomegranate and cold mountain green tea. Thank you. Looks like some herbs and spices. So we're a bit of a tinkerer, a bit of a cook. Very well-rounded. Heart of the Walk. Cooking with a well-seasoned wok can be a sublime, almost spiritual experience. The many layers of the blackened surface are like stored memories of all the meals that have gone in and out of the carbon steel bowl before. Now, imparting echoes of their rich flavor to every new meal it is tasted to cook. I really do feel that these books are alluding to events or uh, situations that we're going to be facing in the future. Um, the way that this is talking about like imparting memories of the past and things like that. Um, once we get to a certain point in this first section where it's going to explain more about how neural mods work, I think that really rings true with that, with that, uh, Heart of the Walk book. Have some nice ties here. I think as female Morgan, this was, uh, necklaces or something, if I'm not mistaken. March 15th, 2032. It's interesting, like, the way that technology is here, it's pretty similar to what we have going on. Okay, we've got a few books down here. Let's check this out. Engineering Control Systems. There's a metaphor there, here, you know. Uh, typically, the objective of control theory is to monitor the output of a system and compare it with the desired output, or the reference signal. The difference between the actual and the desired outputs, the error signal, is applied as feedback to the input of the system to bring the actual output closer to the reference. Good control systems and good engineers learn from the past. Again, referencing the past. Uh, Principles of Neuroscience 10th edition. The brain was once considered too warm, wet, and noisy for seemingly delicate quantum processes. However, the discovery of quantum coherence in biological processes such as plant photosynthesis, avian nav navigation, and our own sense of smell paved the way for the eventual discovery of quantum vibrations inside the microtubules of neurons. So learning from other species to kind of enhance ourselves. Consciousness, the fire in the equations. The nature of consciousness remains deeply mysterious. How can the subjective nature of experience, which is my inner life, be explained in scientific terms? Does consciousness emerge from complex computations among brain neurons? Or is it a fundamental and irreducible property woven into the fabric of the universe? Pretty heavy. Introduction to the survey of parapsychological meta-analysis. For example, conducting a meta-analysis of over 2,000 Gansfeld trials, wherein participants are subjected to mild sensory deprivation in order to test for telepathy, reveals a hit rate of 39%. It's pretty high. These results are statistically significant, meaning that the success rate is above what could be explained by chance alone. There's no denying it. Something spooky is going on. Midnight Songs, a classic anthology of Tang Dynasty verse. Excerpt from an anthology of Tang poetry by the owner Wang Zhuan. I have no clue what this says, but if anybody could translate that, I'd be really interested to hear what that means. And then an account of Fermi's question. Consider that there are billions of stars in the galaxy like our sun, many of them far older. Some of these stars will have Earth-like planets. Many of these planets may have developed in intelligent life. Some intelligent life may develop interstellar travel. If a civilization began before ours, it seems possible, even probable, that even at the speed of currently envisioned interstellar travel, they could already have the entire galaxy colonized. The problem is, we haven't detected any such civilizations, nor have any contacted us. 
Why? It's a good question. Um, there's the, it reminds me of this quote. I can't remember it exactly, but it goes along the lines of... Oh, look, that's family, I guess. We look pretty well off in this... I don't know. It's kind of a grim-looking photo almost, but yeah, look, brother's quite a bit older, but maybe the age thing isn't a big deal. I mean, we've got some character in our in our face as well. Like, interesting. Um, it reminds me of this quote where it's like about extraterrestrial life and how it's scary that um, you know there could be extraterrestrial life out there. But it's scarier to think that there's not, and that we are completely alone. I actually, like, I really like that. I wish I could just memorize it, but... Okay, um... Let's put on the suit. First day on the job. Okay, get in the helicopter on the roof. No problem. Seems pretty straightforward. Oh, these are just the lights above our bed. 4510, we're 4509. Morning, Mr. Yu. Hey, Patricia. 1 West 63rd Avenue. Uh, building management saying water pressure issues have been identified and are being resolved. We apologize for any inconvenience this may have caused. You're a solid whistler. 45th floor. Heard there's a chopper on the roof. Must be for you. Yeah, you're probably You'll right. You'll have to take the elevator. Down the hall. But you know that, I guess. These things can be tricky, you know? <laughs> yeah, the uh, elevator location gets me every time. Aren't you going to be late? You're supposed to keep going. You're supposed to keep going? That's interesting. You're going to get me in trouble. Why? We're just chatting. I can't talk to you anymore. Huh. Okay. Now there's some things that I know from the demo that I like I don't want to spoil if this is your first time going through here, so uh yeah, I'll just leave it at that for now. Let's head to the roof. Echelon Residential Tower. It's a nice place, to tell you that much. Actually, this little opening sequence is very cool. Uh, I'm just gonna let this let this roll for you guys. Mr. Yu, please make yourself comfortable and we'll be on our way. Transdog facility is just a short hop. 78 degrees, clear skies all the way. Look how gorgeous this is. That's a nice view on the bay there. And Arcane Studios production. I love how they've... I love this opening scene. I think it's very smart, very well done. It's a Transtar building. Conveniently, not too far from our apartment. Here we are, Mr. Yu. Mind the glass on the way out. Good luck to you. Thank you. Hello, Dr. Yu. Hello. 
The last frontier is the human mind, and we are its pioneers. William, you. So, we're Morgan, brother Alex. And William, I'm guessing, would be our father, um, which potentially has kind of developed this empire. That's my running theory here. Um, and a lot to do with, like, these neuro mods and the human mind and what's physically capable and how we can kind of enhance ourselves, if that makes sense. Um, when we were in the demo, I talked about this a bit, but if you look at this science operator, kind of like the way that it's built, if we are to, to take that we're in the year 2032 right now, which I'm not 100% sure of, uh, for reasons that we'll talk about a bit later, but if you look at this, like, the components within the science operator aren't too far from what we have today. It's kind of hacked together and a little bit mishmash, but the technology behind it and the, the AI within it is like, super, super advanced, so it's kind of interesting. I'm a Sybil 495 science class operator. It won't be long before you're on a shuttle bound for Talos 1. My instruments are calibrated for high volume data analysis and live readings. Don't worry, nothing will be missed. <laughs> I wouldn't expect you to miss anything. Transtar has over a dozen state-of-the-art facilities across the globe. More, if you count the entire Earth-Moon system. Okay. Everyone's eager to see what you're capable of, Dr. Yu. I know I am. Our research often requires intense focus and long hours. I can provide you with a psychoactive stimulant after the test, if necessary. I'm sure your brother is waiting for you. All our labs meet the minimum. <laughs> Strange. That's never happened before. I'll have to file a maintenance request. <laughs> Please excuse me, Dr. Yu. I wonder what that was supposed to be. The elevator will take you directly to the testing area. Okay. Well, thanks. The other thing is, like, the technology, like, the TV screens, even this, like, having things hooked up via cables, like, nothing's complete... Not everything is completely wireless. This thing, obviously, is more advanced, but um, there's still, like, roots in today's technology, which I find really interesting. Welcome, Morgan Yu. You have a 9 a.m. appointment in the testing facility. Please confirm. I'll confirm it. Now, we can examine these objects and get, like, a more kind of zoomed in view of them, but I like that we can just interact with everything on the surface level, if that makes sense, without having to dive into a deeper interface. Okay, floor 71. Morgan, finally. There's our big bro. These scuff marks everywhere. Somebody should clean this place up. Hey, Alex. Hey. You don't look terrible in a Transtar uniform. Thank you. Do I. <laughs> Still red? I know the test might seem a little unconventional, but it's a you family tradition. Breaking convention is in our blood. Once you start the test, just do whatever comes natural. You got it. Don't overthink it. Dr. Bellamy's gonna walk you through the process. You're in good hands. We'll be in orbit next week. I promise. Mr. Yu, they're ready for your brother in room A. Right. Okay. Listen, just be yourself. I'll see you after. Now, if we take a look at this screen Dr. here, Yu. can we see anything on there? Test participant Morgan Yu. All right. It's a med kit back there. <laughs> I wish I could show you what I've been working on. You better get in there before Bellamy gets impatient. <laughs> I'm noticing, like, what's with all these scuff marks everywhere? Is that... that's kind of bizarre. Like, you would think for such a high-tech place that everything would be pristine and kept in, like, tip-top condition, but... The Method Psy, we actually read this in our apartment already. Yeah, this place is actually a lot dirtier than I... Remember from the demo and... Good morning, Morgan. No, it's weird. I'm Dr. Bellamy. Looks like we have some tests to run through today. Probably not the kind of thing you're used to, I imagine, but trust me, you're going to do fantastic. All good? I hope so. Great. Let's begin. For this first test, I'd like you to remove the boxes from the red circle as quickly as you can. Just go with your gut. Okay? Wonderful. Press the red button when you're ready. Here we go. Ooh. 
We're good. That's, <laughs> you're absolutely fine. Uh, let's move on to room B then. Look at her facial expressions, how she's reacting to this. She's like, something's weird here. <laughs> okay, Morgan, listen carefully. I'd like you to do your best to hide in this room. Take your time, relax, think it over. No, I'm kidding. You only have nine <laughs> seconds. Hit the red button when you're ready to start. Well, we don't have a lot of options here, so... <laughs> Look. You see? <laughs> He's hiding behind the chair. Hmm, uh, don't judge me. Don't judge me. Any synaptic register? At all? No? Hmm. That's fine. Sorry, let's keep things moving more. Whoops. Head into room C. You're doing marvelous. There's obviously something they're not telling us, but... Alright. Here we go. For this test, please press the blue button across the room as quickly as you can in the most natural, intuitive way possible, without thinking. Just, just go for it. <laughs> Press the red button. When what you're other ready. possible way could I get to that button, I wonder? I'm sorry, can someone please explain Look. to me what's happening? <laughs> what? I installed exactly what Tina brought down. Did you double check? The speaker's still on. Yeah, thanks, guys. I apologize, Morgan. We're having some trouble with the equipment. Not your fault. You're doing fabulous, actually. One last room. Let's step into D. How the camera tracks us everywhere. Can someone get me a cup of coffee? I would appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, Morgan. Have a seat at the table for me, please. Wonderful job. Take a look at the screen in front of you. I'm going to show you a series of questions. Pick the answer that makes the most sense to you. Okay. Let's start on the screen when you're ready. So you're planning a vacation. Go somewhere familiar you know you love, or try something new. I think we try something new. Ah. Huh. Good. Looks like you've got the hang of it. What the? Keep going. You've been sentenced to death for your actions. How does this make you feel? Well, <laughs> depends what the actions are. Um, but I would say that we would be afraid because we don't know what's going to happen. Ooh, that's heavy stuff. A runaway train is bearing down on five people who are tied to the track. You can cause the train to switch tracks... But there's one person tied to the second track. These, these questions are... This is impossible to answer because you either doom one person or you doom the five. And if you know the outcome, it's terrible. But... I don't know. I think in the demo, I, cho I chose do nothing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choose to switch tracks in this scenario. Good. Next. Our runaway train is bearing down on five people. You're standing on the platform next to an enormously fat man. Pushing him onto the track would stop the train. See, this one's a little bit more, uh... I don't know, they're, they're impossible to answer. I'm gonna say do nothing in this, in this specific scenario. Almost done. A runaway train is bearing down on five people tied to a track. You could stop the train by jumping onto the track, but you would die. So we either jump onto the track, push the fat man, which doesn't even mention, or do nothing. Um... I'll, we'll be selfless and we'll we'll bite the bullet on this one. Bite the wow. train. I'm impressed. Well done. Well done. We're nearly through it. For this next part, I'm going to display an image. I want you to take a good look at it. Whoa! Then, I'm going to ask you what... Uh, oh, I never noticed that before! It's empty. Whoa! Oh, that's crazy! 
Oh, I never noticed that. You see how the coffee cup, like, duplicated? Dude, we saw that creature jump up from behind the desk and become a coffee cup? That's crazy. That's crazy. Nice. I never saw that in the demo. Simmons, Whoa. what's going on? Cool. We have a problem. What about Morgan? He's alive. Sedated. Clean it up. I'm on my way. Got it. Clean it up. I'm on my way. Good morning, Morgan. Today is Monday, March 15th, 2032. <laughs> Sound familiar? Deja vu much? Everything looks the same. Oh, can't open that. Can re-grab the same exact supplies that were here previously. We have six emails this time. Danger, leave now. From January to Morgan. We don't know who January is. Leave now, leave now, leave now. I don't know what EOM means. End of message, maybe? Okay. Now, some things are different. The wine is moved. Kings and Way sparkling wine. And the note. Because this was on the other table previously. Sun-dried tomato jerky. Let's grab any food that we can. The glucosist. The pomegranate and the cold mountain green tea. That's all the same. All the books are still here. Yeah, something isn't as it seems, though. Let's put on the suit and figure that out. Swing wrench with mouse one. Press T to view more. The Hephaestus Hefe Twist and Loop Handle Wrench is standard issue for all maintenance personnel employed in the Transtar facilities. Good for liberal application of percussive maintenance and mechanical agitation. Use mouse one to swing your wrench. Important, press and hold mouse one to charge your attack for maximum damage. All wrench attacks will drain your stamina. My code name is January. You're not dreaming. Oh, whoa. What yesterday was real. If you want to know what's going on, first, you need to get out of your apartment building. You're not safe. Okay, that... The reason I'm saying whoa... Is because... In the demo, we picked the female, um... Morgan? And January was definitely a female voice. Oh, sorry, Patricia. And now, as male Morgan... January is a male voice. So we know that this is jammed, however. Hello! This is big bomb reveal number one. Look at this. <laughs> this is like, I love this. This is outstanding. Good. You're in the simulation lab. Now get to the exit. I'll keep in contact. We're in a simulation lab. Evelyn McCarthy. So this is an activity log from February 22nd. So sleeping, wakes up, turns off alarm, checks transcribe, on computer various tasks, takes shower, puts on uniform. Now what's interesting to me is this is February 22nd, 2035. The original date was March 15th, right? Um, of 2032. Which means that was three years ago. The other thing that's interesting is this is this should be February 23rd, but it's February 23rd and 2035, so human error, I suppose. But something's something's weird with this timeline. 
We're on this loop, it seems. Maybe for years. I don't know. Okay, let's check these emails. Evelyn McCarthy. Daily tests. If you've been on branches of our main product line, you know that sometimes we need to put in extra effort to hit our milestones. And any external risks are fully taken into account when these decisions are made. The move to extend indefinitely was a re direct request from both Alex and Morgan. This is a reply to an email from Evelyn to Sylvan, the guy we saw conducting the test, saying, At this point, Morgan's exhaustion is inhibiting our ability to get any useful results. That's to say nothing of the long-term damage we're likely inflicting from the constant Neuromod installation and removal. Tell me again why we've extended the testing indefinitely. And then he says the move was a direct request from both Alex and Morgan. So we're seemingly in on this. Uh, here's a note from Alex to the Neuromod division. I know this morning's incident has left people shaken. To prevent unnecessary panic, please refa refrain from contacting people outside of your department. A station-wide announcement will be made shortly. In the meantime, Miss Elazar and her security team are on high alert and will field any questions or requests that you have. I know some of you are worried about Dr. Bellamy. He's currently being treated in a trauma center and is in critical but stable condition. Thank you for your patience and dedication to the project. It's pretty heavy. There's also some utilities here. Audio events. Refer to test run for timing of audio events. Note, the pigeon, pigeon visuals have been disabled due to a glitch in their render data. <laughs> hey, Morgan. Wake up. You're burning daylight. I sent the helicopter to pick you up. It's just a few tests. Don't forget to wear your suit. See you soon. Oh, listen. I, uh... Really great you decided to come on board. We're gonna shake things up, Morgan. Like old times. So this is when we're now realizing this is all a simulation. This is a test. This is outside of our control, and we seem to be just in this loop. Um, on March... What was it? March 15th? 2032? It's a helicopter. Audio. And then a pigeon test. That's pretty cool. Pretty scary, but pretty cool. Simulation debriefing and observation, and then storage. Looking glass simulation labs scene editor. Like, everything's being controlled by these people. But... It says that the request to extend these tests came from both me and Alex. So... We must be okay with this. The safe code is... Totally blank. Debriefing safe code. This thing is still following us. Okay. We'll have to find this safe code. Delivery for debrief. Manufacturing order number 65489. Delivered to Marco Simmons from Fabrication Department. Marking this entire skew is defective. Investigate with fabrication. Uh-oh. Marco. We have defective... What is this? TSN M008? Not sure what's defective exactly, but... Potentially a Neuromod. It looks like this would be a similar way of applying them. To what we read about. Password, ICOP0876. Marco Simmons' password is acquired. Okay, three emails. Reminder about company password policy. Uh, this is just a friendly reminder from the relevant portion of the policy handbook. Password protection. Do not share your password with anyone. Passwords are sensitive, confidential information. Passwords must not be inserted into email messages, transcribe conversations, or other forms of communication. <laughs> Do not write down passwords and store them anywhere in your office. Okay. Marco Simmons is clearly in violation of this. If you suspect your password has been compromised, report it to IT immediately. Users will be held responsible for any activity that occurs on a workstation that has been compromised and not reported. A note about this morning. We saw this from Alex U already. Bad install. The test today, or test results today were all negative. Did you install the correct Neuromods? Touch base with Graves and figure out what went wrong. This should be your absolute highest priority. So they're thinking that they put in some, they're testing Neuromods 
seemingly on us. And he's wondering, because of the test results that we did earlier, um, did we install the correct ones? Now, theoretically, we could run multiple of these tests in any given actual day if they're just resetting us every time. Okay, there's a safe code, but I don't know what it is. So we're going to have to keep an eye out for this and perhaps come back to this safe in the future. Oh, hello. Oh, no. Sorry, Morgan. Not sure how you managed this, but I can't let you have this key card. Trust me, you'd regret it, Alex. Whoa. Impact dampener. What is this? Reduces damage taken from crashing during flight in zero G. Suit modification skill unlocks more slots. Install chipset. Okay. Cool. Scope chipsets. Whoa. Damage taken from crashing during flights in zero G. All right. Your Transtar uniform and psychoscope can be upgraded with chipsets to provide benefits, boosts, and protections. Um, can be upgraded with chipsets to provide various benefits, boosts, and protections. Install chipsets on the suit chipsets and scope chipsets pages within the inventory tab of your transcribe. Okay, this is cool. I did not find this in the demo, so this is awesome. We have a med kit, glue assist, disruptor stun gun. What? And disruptor batteries. The disruptor stun gun will knock out human targets. Typhon are more resistance, but can still be temporarily stunned. Robotic devices can also be temporarily disabled and ultimately destroyed by the disruptor. Hold mouse one to charge your stun gun and release it to fire. Whoa. What? Now, <laughs> in the demo, we had found this the glue cannon, which we're, we'll find in a bit. Uh, and a shotgun that I missed, but I'll not miss it this time, hopefully. Uh, but I'd never heard of or seen this, so this is pretty cool. Quick select. What did that say? I missed it. Disruptor batteries. Oh, this is awesome. Okay. Well, this is what we get for exploring, I guess. Now we can switch weapons through here. I like that. We have the bar at the bottom. That's really cool. I'm, I'm pumped that we found something that was like, that I didn't see in the demo already, so. This is great. Soundstage rules. Absolute silence when simulation is in progress. Do not enter stage unless in costume. Do not interact with subject off script. Oh, now thinking back to the, the maintenance worker that we talked to, when she was like, she didn't know what to say because we kept talking to her and she's like, I can't talk to you anymore. That makes a lot of sense now. Soundstage A reminders. Always reset the position of stage props in the apartment after each test. Replacements for damage props can be found in the storage area. Be careful not to bump glass when in observation zones. Soundstage B. The helicopter ride looking glass sequence should only be reset in the overlooking control room. Make sure to clear the rooftop of any stray objects during the simulated flight. Always return the helicopter to its ready position after being serviced. Now, the props, they did reset, but remember that we saw the wine in a different location, so... Like, it's human interaction. They're not perfect. Oh, man, there's, like, stuff... Okay, we're definitely gonna have to check... ...things more thoroughly. Plastic tubing. Hello. Secret door into our apartment. <laughs> this is so cool. Okay, we'll come back here. I just want to check the other side. With storage, I believe. Plastic tubing, frayed wire, frayed wires. Oh, we have a looking glass on the opposite. Oh, this is like... Oh, they have so many points to watch us through and we would have no idea. 
But, again, it sounds like... Oh, that's another looking glass panel. Oh, we can just break through them. Whoa, okay. But we were in on this, right? At least that's what the email said. 744, ID number 428. This is the wine that we drink. Our chairs. Basic necessities. Even panels for the for the floor in our building. Like everything. Whoa! Whoa, that thing just changed. What? They're so quick, but I wonder if we can catch them changing into stuff often. Why are we freaking out right now? <laughs> I don't know if there's going to be a lot of like jump things, but oh, it's this is it feels spooky. I don't know where that one went. He's gone. Or it's gone. Did you hear that? What is that every time we walk through here? It's strange. And now we've come full circle. Okay, let's carry on. Here's the helicopter simulation. Look at it, it's fully mounted down. What is that saying? Saying I'll save you? Maybe? Maybe. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. Spare parts, thank you. Look at all these things, they're having clear malfunction, but... Take the med kit. We've got errors on the systems. Let's reset the simulation. That is so cool. Dimitri Bowser. This is the note from Alex again. What utilities are you running? Scene selection. So authorized scene transition times include when Morgan Yu is inside the elevator and during maintenance operation between test runs. Report any technical issues immediately to Dr. Sylvain Bellamy. So if we switch to the rooftop entrance. Oh, that's so cool. Reset the test rooms to current configuration. Oh, those are the test rooms. Okay, yeah, right. Oh, whoa, whoa. So those four testing chambers, we can reset them via this button. The third one was just the computer screen, right? So there's nothing to reset in there, I guess. Look at that. <laughs> That's so cool. Whoa! Look at him morph into that chair! In the demo, I never caught on to them, onto them changing like that. Oh, 
Whoa! Can he break through here? I'm gonna guess yes. Oh, we can do it. That's probably bad. So we can get right into here and we could like swap things, I guess. Huh. I wonder why we would ever want to do that, but maybe for certain things. Desks and the like. Okay, Zhao Long Hang. Note about this morning from Alex. Morgan's behavior. Alex has requested all orders go through him after Morgan's outburst at the debrief, depending a psych or pending a psych evaluation. Alex indicated he doesn't want any more surprises from Morgan, nor do we. Granted, Morgan had forgotten everything from the last test, as expected, but the aggressive response to the same set of testing criteria was clearly a departure. My recommendation is that we need to start charting personality drift before future tests, in debriefings, and within the test itself. Sylvain seems to be the, kind of the lead of these tests, obviously. I don't know what crumpled paper is going to do for us, but... Marco Simmons transcribe. Okay, so that was the conversation that they had. It says pre-recorded. Was that all part of this too, maybe? I'm not sure. They had the overhead view of our apartment, everything. Everything's very strict. Makes sense, I guess. Can't give me any indication that I'm being watched. Whoa! Whoa, you see that shift? And it just went and changed to something else. I wonder what- how it decides if it's going to attack us. Now it's switching to the coffee cup? Oh, that is crazy. Whoa. Typhon organ. And these tumors, but we need this, uh, necropsy or necropsy. That's a skill. Same thing as this leverage one. Greta Mickelson, corpse. We could take another wrench, I guess. That's crazy how we see it running and shifting. Oh, there's another! Oh. What? What the hell? You see that surprise attack? Where did it go? What does that mean, surprise attack? So we can... Okay, so we should be looking for things that could be mimics, like duplicates in an environment. And if we get the attack off... I don't know what it did. Maybe it's more damage or something? Press OK to reset the simulation. Greta Mickelson. For technical issues, contact Dr. Lorenzo Calvino or Mio Okabe. <laughs> Echelon Roof. Isn't that cool? LG power. For technical issues, okay. Oh, looking glass power on, off. It's, it's all BS, like it's crazy.
Now these components, presumably we're gonna be able to use to craft things later. To what degree, I'm not sure, but. Seems like we can access like any area that, well, that we want to. If we see it, we can get there, I think is the idea. You hear that? Oh, I think that's probably it. Oh, for sure it is. Whoa! <laughs> Jeez. Okay, okay, okay. I gotcha. I'm on high alert already. This is bad. Wait, we're seeing another one? Oh, man. And they split. No one has been able to stop the mimics from multiplying since they broke containment. I'm going to help you stay alive. Just a little further. Banana peel, spare parts. Okay. Is a banana peel... Is that edible? A decaying banana peeled. Material yield, okay. So this is, we'll eventually get to these things where we can recycle uh, certain products in your inventory and that's probably all that this is for. Med kits, suit repair, nothing else. Only approved items past this point. Okay, let's actually go ahead and let's use this med kit. Get our health back up there. So health and suit integrity both at 96 for now. It's better. So who's in the simulation laboratory? Hydraulic engineer Misha, Greta, we've unfortunately found Greta. Marco Simmons, Evelyn McCarthy, and Mike Turner's out. And then there are their jobs. This is Joven Gravilovich Neuromod Design. Non local, super liminal. Let's read the emails here. So, next week's test. Joven. This is from uh, Bellamy again. We'll need the room updated to this new test plan. Configurations are as follows. So room A, we want area of effect. Room B, we want copycat. And room C, we want spooky action. Simmons, let us know if anything changes. Huh. Ours this time were the boxes, uh, hiding behind the chair, and jumping over the platform. So yeah, pretty significant differences. Same note about the morning. Urgent from Marco to Joven. I think Bellamy's taken data related to mimicry and remote manipulation out of the research department. Get to the trauma center and grab the key card to his cabin off his body. I'm sorry to be morbid, but Alex will lose his shit if someone else finds that data. So it seems like Bellamy is not actually doing well. Because that little pop-up just said take it off his corpse. <laughs> because a note about this morning, whoops, saying he's currently being treated in the trauma center is in critical but stable condition. Something doesn't add up here. Play your way. Experiment with different approaches to overcome challenges and enemies. You can get past the locked door by searching for the key card, finding an alternate path. As you learn new abilities, more options will become available to you. Looks like, okay, it's highlighting a key card for this here. Or there's this little, um, I don't know what you'd call this, but like a, uh, like a air duct that we can go through. In the demo, we went through the door with a key card that we found. Now, could this be a mimic situation? These two chairs? <laughs> About to find out. Oh! <laughs> okay, this is actually... This is actually awesome. This is Alice's desk. Simulation question. Hey, Alice. I'll send you the white paper Alex and Morgan wrote. 
we're seemingly working on all this stuff together. Here's the nutshell version for now. Gaining a new skill from a Nero mod works similar in the way your brain creates new memories. In fact, it's impossible for now to separate the changes the mod makes from normal memory formation. So if I want to strip the Nero mod that makes you play piano like Gustav Leitner, it'll reset your brain back to the moment before you first installed it. Interesting. They wanted Morgan's mind pristine to receive the prototype Nero mods. That means going way the hell back. Hence the apartment sim. The user dedicated to their science is all I can say. Hit me up for lunch later. Okay, so that, that simulation was in 2032. We saw the event logs recording 2035, so that's three years. So presumably we've gone back three years to this apartment that we used to live in. And we've removed the Nero mods to that point so that everything past the Neuromod installation would be uh, forgotten. Which kind of explains the the loop that we're now in. Or maybe we're not in anymore, but... Looking for duplicates. Yep! Oh! Hello. It's so crazy how they just, they run off and then they dupe into something else. Or not. Pizza box? That's so cool. Okay, Typhon organs. He's got bullets on him. And then these tumors. Oh, did that thing just wobble? No. Stand up notes. Test for 324. Reorder tests. Luc Lucia on observation. See Bellamy. Flammability test cancelled indefinitely. And Alex wants to greet Morgan before the test. What is that noise? Okay, Morgan you February 18th. Yeah, so this is in line with the dates that we saw. We're passing all these tests, NA, NA, sure. But then fail, fail, fail. So this is the actual date, 223, uh, 2035. Okay. This is Bellamy's office. Oh! Hello. Okay, now that I'm understanding more about how these mimics are working, this is a uh, game changer. Here's a key card. Now Bellamy's computer. Okay, personality drift results. Here are the last result or here are the results from today's personality test. I'm seeing some drift over the last few trials compared with previous results. This isn't the first time. I'll let Alex know. Most recent test is pasted below for reference. So you're planning a vacation, go somewhere familiar or new? We said new. Been sentenced to death. How do you feel? Afraid. Um, runaway trains bearing down on five people who are tied. You can cause it to switch, but there's only one person there. So we've switched. Probably regrettably. Uh, runaway trains bearing down on five people. You're standing on the platform next to an enormously fat man. We did nothing. And then we jumped in front of the tracks, knowing that it would stop them to save other people. Daily tests from Evelyn to Sylvan. At this point, Morgan's exhaustion is inhibiting our ability. So we'd read this earlier. Um, and then to which Bellamy replied, Morgan and Alex were the ones that wanted to extend these tests. And then from Matthias Cole, have my people been coming to you? And the reply is, yeah, I've noticed the same thing. Um, you know I can't divulge names, but there's definitely been a spike in staff from your department reporting instances of acute anxiety. It's actually much worse with the psychotronic staff. I'm talking to Kelstrip about mitigating some of the stress here, but I'm concerned that they are not isolated incidents. I'm going to mention it to Alex at the next director's meeting. I think Matthias, is he the um, HR director? Which is why he can't divulge his names or what have you, like everything's confidential. Okay, so we've checked all of the computers. Uh, we went through here last time in the demo. To 
Does this actually do anything for us? I'm trying to see if it's healing us at all. Oh, it does. It heals us by one. All right. Maintenance access panel. Here we go. Now, those ways around that door were obviously uh, explained to us, but... In the future, it's definitely not going to be so easy. Whoa. <laughs> no, thank you. No, thank you. Type in Anthrophantasmus. Keep moving. Yeah, you got it. The noetic field. Noetic research, like all bold new ideas, has undergone a predictable pattern in the scientific community. First, skeptics ridicule the idea since it violates conventional wisdom and the laws of science. Second, skeptics grudgingly concede that the idea might be possible in some circumstances, but the evidence is weak. Third, the idea catches the attentions of mainstream researchers and, most importantly, the public. Finally, the same skeptics who once laughed at the idea now claim that they thought of it first. Okay, so on the first floor, we've got observation, testing rooms, neuromod debriefing, storage, simulation stage B. Second floor, conference room, skill recording, security, control room B, research and design. Whoops. Neuromod testing, volunteer quarters fabrication. Okay. Now, I'm not using this disruptor gun yet because it was saying that it's not that effective against these enemy types. So, we'll hold on to that. Control panel, repair one. Many objects and talents can be repaired if you have the repair skill and enough parts. To repair an object, hold down the G button until the repair is completed. And this is repair level one, the grav shaft repair. Whoa. Now, I wonder what causes them to either to run and hide or attack us on sight. Maybe if there's nothing nearby that they can actually mimic? But there's plenty of stuff around. This must be the grav shaft. So if we can repair this, then potentially we get access to the second floor. Hello. Blue cannon. Glue canisters. The Transtar Glue Cannon, the Jelly Foam Lattice Organism Obstructor, disables and or immobilizes targets without harming them. Glue can extinguish flames and temporarily stop electric arcs. When hardened, glue can be also used as a climbable platform. Press 1 to fire it, press and hold it to fire a continuous stream. Okay, so suit repair, some bullets, med kit, and more glue canisters. Yeah, see how, like, this is set up along the wall and then we can climb it? Lemon peel, more glue. Oh, look at them! Look at them! They're everywhere. So this is Veer. We can also break this. There, I guess, potentially could be hiding stuff if we find it out in the wild. Okay, you know what? I think we'll take a break here. Um, when we come back, we're going to continue into... Oh, boy. We're going to continue down this path and uh, and see where it leads. I'm really excited. Um, very shortly, we'd reach the end of the demo area, but I found out a lot more in this playthrough than I did in the demo. Um, this is really cool. Like, I'm so into this story right now, it's not even funny. I'm really interested to see where this goes. Uh, if you guys have any thoughts, uh, let me know. But uh, I'll probably be putting out quite a few videos of this over the next little while. So um, I would appreciate if you guys uh, had any feedback or suggestions. But um, yeah, I'm interested to see where it goes. Since this is the first video of the series, if you guys could drop a like on it, that would mean a lot to me and it helps me out a lot. Um, if you like the video, just share it with your friends. If you're new here, I uh, hope you enjoyed and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Bye.